What's going on team, it's your boy G, and today we're going to be talking about Black Panther Wakanda Forever, bro. I'm so excited to talk about this movie, but before we get into it, I had one main question going into this thing, man. And that was, will this movie still have the same magic that we fell in love with in the first movie, but also will it be able to stand alone on its own two feet? Now to start things off, man, this movie was like an emotional seesaw, bro, for good and bad reasons. And the topics they covered in this movie definitely explored loss and just the grieving process. But there's still a level of trauma that they hit us with immediately at the beginning of this movie. So I'm not super mad at that. I'll talk about it a little bit more later on. But it's just something that like you immediately notice. And then at the same time, this movie had great reveals from Killmonger popping up in the ancestral planes to Nakia announcing that T'Challa had a son, which for me saved this movie. If that moment didn't happen, bro, this movie probably would have been mid just because what that means for the future, right? But the movie still had the intangibles that we're all looking for when going into a Black Panther film and that's, you know, fashion, tech and culture so overall it's a it's a beautiful movie and we got a, a better look at wakanda as like a city i'm not gonna lie bro it felt a lot smaller than it did in the first movie i don't know if that was intentional but i guess that really only makes sense once you start becoming more acquainted with a place now this was for sure the funniest marvel movie that we've gotten this year and they finally gave us a really good antagonist backstory with Neymar so so all in all it's a pretty good start to this thing man but let's get further into it let's get into the character breakdown all right man we got to start off with Shuri aka Black Panther aka Latino right and I gotta say man I was nervous going into this thing just because to kind of be thrusted into the spotlight it's got to be difficult so I definitely appreciated the journey that you know Shuri went on in this movie as a character but I will say there's still something missing something that would have took things over the top because of the reasons why I like Shuri in the first movie kind of all went away with this one and she kind of became a whole new character that I'm not going to say was bad, but it was just different, you know? And they addressed this in the movie, especially when she took the herb and went to the ancestral plane and had a conversation with Killmonger, where we got to see a different side of Shuri because she's not her brother. She's not super noble. She's very, very analytical when it came to things. Like she didn't really think that the ancestral plane was a real thing, you know? So all the traditional things that you would do to grieve doesn't really process with her. And we get to see her go on this journey throughout the movie where she meets a lot of characters in this movie with resistance, which can feel a little bit annoying just because this is not the character we've grown to see. So moments where Queen Ramonda hits us with her famous line of show them who you are feels a little bit cheapened because of the way that they decide to go with throughout the plot. So overall, I appreciate her performance, but I'll just say there's still room to grow. Now with Neymar, Tanakh Haruder, I don't know if that's how you say it. Sorry if I, I, I butchered your name, but his backstory was perfect, man. The perfect setup for a great antagonist, which he was. Once again, they're reintroducing mutants. And at this point, Neymar is one of the oldest characters in the cast of heroes and villains that we got in the MCU so far. So that was a really cool moment in the movie. And, and I think the biggest takeaway for me was just the way that he fought, right? The way that he flew. Like there were so many different things that we're not used to seeing especially from like a flying standpoint like this man was really running on air with the wings on his feet bro. them joints went crazy so that in combination with him having his own vibranium weapons and then his people having their own way of fighting was really really cool thing to see from the mermaid calls to the water bombs bro like they just went crazy and don't even get me talking about their underwater city i still have so many questions about that but with this character they stayed in line with one of the revolving issues in wakanda specifically when divers discover vibranium in the ocean and now they're in the whole battle for geopolitical power and now at this point it's kind of just like wakanda and tolokan versus everybody but i'll talk a little bit about that more in the plot segment of this movie because i still have words about that but overall man neymar did his thing i'm super excited to see where he goes in the future now we gotta talk about one of the goats man queen romanda aka angela bassett bro she carried the plot and was the catalyst for the final act of this movie now from a narrative standpoint she held it down because she was queen bro she had to show strength and she definitely did that throughout this movie and became a hero so 
for me, this gets into one of my gripes about the movie. Like, bro, there was so much loss and I just don't feel like it was necessary for her to die, to serve the plot. I, she could have been in a coma. She could have even been bedridden and gave Shuri those same messages that she gave T'Challa. And when she came through on the astral plane, it wouldn't have been just a flash. It would have actually made sense and been a way more impactful moment in the movie instead of feeling like mad corny, bro. Like, even though she went out as a hero by saving Riri, aka Ironheart, the ups and downs emotionally, bro, like, I just felt like we was getting kicked while we was still down, bro. And I just was like, bro, that did not need to happen. Because they showed it, bro. Under her rule, Wakanda was the strongest ever. And one of my favorite moments and scenes in this movie was when she actually fired Okoye from being the general. It's like, because you could tell, like, she didn't want to do that, but she felt like she had no other choice in the matter. So regardless of how she really felt, she still felt like she made the best decision, which would play out later on in the movie. It was just one of those things where I was like, man, ain't no way they doing this, bro. Ain't no way way but she's still a goat though which we all know now next person i want to talk about is a koye or or the nega rira because even though she's one of the more serious characters in this movie she always has some of the funniest scenes bro like in her comedy is the fact that she takes things so serious so when she got fired bro we saw all those tears i was like man i was like why y'all doing this to me bro like yo she tried her best best but queen ramonda was spitting facts she kept losing youngin so something had to change and i'm be honest bro one of those things need to be okoye's new suit bro i did not rock with that joint at all maybe it was the colorway maybe it was the mask i like get the inspiration and stuff behind it but for me it just didn't work now with that suit she was able to have some really dope moments in the final battle but she was right man shuri Sure, he might have the tech, but that joint did not look right. I'm not gonna cap. Now, next, I want to talk about one of the biggest surprises of the whole movie, man. And man, Michael B. as back with Kill monger now wasn't really expecting this i seen him on like the red carpets but i just thought that was more so of uh i was in the first movie let me show up in the next one type beat like just show love so to see him pop up and be the ancestor that she receives after taking the heart shape herb was a 3d printed by the way it was a really cool moment because killmonger's mission though it was a cruel one makes all the sense in the world once you hear his whole backstory and for me made him a really dope antagonist in the first first movie even though the way he went about it was all wrong but having him back was like the perfect person for Shuri to get not only pushback from but also insight to how she really feels because up until that point Shuri was never really expressing how she felt she kept saying everything was fine but you could see that she wasn't fine and he was kind of what she needed to fully embrace the Black Panther role and be basically push her over the edge and really set her apart from T'Challa because he said it bro T'Challa was way too noble to do what needed to be done in his eyes and then T'Challa and Shuri's father was basically a hypocrite because of the way he took his brother out. So all the motivations work for him. And he kind of just pushed that on to Shuri. Because we all know, like, for us, Shuri doesn't have that real background to have the motivation to be a cold-blooded killer <laughs> like Killmonger was. But Killmonger basically provided that in this sequence, which gave us a different feeling for what the Black Panther could be. And then we all knew what was gonna happen in the end where she's gonna walk it back and not become a savage and be kind of somewhat in between. For me, it works. Now, what I would have liked to see from Killmonger in this moment was a little bit of introspection instead of him kind of picking up where he left off. But who knows, man, maybe we'll see him again. But next, I gotta talk about Riri or Ironheart who was played by Dominique Thorne, who to me was the perfect addition to this movie because she was just the funniest, bro. She was the culture, bro. Like, I think she had the perfect introduction. I don't know about suit design because I like the first suit more so than the final suit she made in this movie. And I'm super excited to see all the little Stark Tech Easter eggs. And I'm just, bro, I need to see her show now. Like, I'm super geeked about that. And just her personality and the character that she has just seems very, very familiar. So, awesome job from her. Now, next, we got to talk Nakia, bro, or Lupita, who I wish we could have seen more of her into Charles' relationship to make her return more meaningful. Because the way she left the first movie, bro, I was like, well, 
that's it. Like she gone again. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I just, I honestly kind of forgot that she was going to be in this joint. Like no cap. And I think her moments in this movie were pretty good. Like she didn't really have no real challenges other than the conversation that she had with Queen Ramonda, where we really got to see how much T'Challa meant to her. But she's still such a mystery, bro. That I'm still left like feeling like mm, I don't, I just don't, I don't know about you. You know what I'm saying? Like her rescue of Jerry and Riri was like way too easy. Like, I like the journey and the progress she had to make to get there. But to only have to fight two people and get out clean was kind of far-fetched. I'm not going to cap. I guess that's cool, you know. But the, the main thing, bro, the main thing was she had a son, bro. Like, and that is what really saved this movie from being mid to me. Because once we get into, like, the plot, I'll talk a little bit more about it. But a lot of things in this movie kind of end in a stalemate. And with her character and in addition of her son, Gave us somewhat of a future. So that's just my take on it. Um, but the last person I want to talk about was Mbaku. Uh, just because he's the last man standing. You know, Winston Duke is funny as ever in this movie. But also offers counsel, which is a really cool thing. And they all seem to have conversations with each other before he died. Which was something that it's not a hard thing to get your mind around. So how personable he gets with Shuri was a cool thing to see. And to find out that he's going to become the king of Wakanda at the end of the movie. I was like, oh, man, yeah, like, you deserve it. Like, that was super dope. Now, I know that was a lot, but there's so many good characters and even more that I didn't even address in the character breakdown. But we got to get into the plot now, bro, because I have things to say. So the initial opening for this movie was very powerful um, and it hit a little bit too close to home just because of the way that they said T'Challa went out from an unknown sickness and seeing Shuri, you know, having the ability to possibly heal her brother, but not be able to do it in time was heartbreaking, bro. I'm not going to cap. And to go from there to the funeral, which was beautiful. It was the way that I had kind of expected for this movie to start. But I'm going to be honest, bro. I didn't want to stay there. And they just kept bringing me back. And I just didn't enjoy that. Like the topics that they covered is something that, you know, we don't normally see at a grand scale in like superhero movies, which is loss and grief. But I think there are topics that are important to, you know, cover in life in general. But for there to be so much loss, bro, like it was just an emotional freaking roller coaster. And from a pacing standpoint, it just kind of felt like it was all over the place because you just go from highs to lows. And I just kind of felt like I was getting attacked at some points, bro. It's just a weird feeling. And then for how long the movie is for the kind of end in a stalemate was whack to me. I'm not going to cap. I'm not going to I'm not saying that Namor and his people needed to die or anything. I'm just saying that it just needed to lead to something better than Wakanda and Tola Khan. Is going to start working together now like it's just didn't work for me i'm not going to cap but what does work is this movie as a sequel because the first movie covers similar themes of of geopolitical powers but they did take it a step further from things being solely about wakanda and there being somewhat of a civil war and them having to protect their own country to in this movie protecting somebody else and now they got allies land and sea you know so I like that aspect of the movie, but I still wish that they had like more of a subtle approach when it came down to some of the decisions and the characters that survived and the ones that didn't, because it felt like they were just continuously fishing for tears and still kind of selling trauma at the end of the day, which if you look at, you know, Ryan Cooler's catalog makes sense, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. It's just sometimes like things came way too close to reality. Now, from a world building aspect in this movie, you saw the CIA wasn't involved. We saw that under Queen Ramondez, rule of Wakanda was as strong as ever. But we're still getting little insights to whatever the Thunderbolts is going to end up being because the director showed up again in this movie, this time with Ross. And apparently they had a thing back in the day I didn't even know about. But I will say up until like I, you know, was writing my notes for this review i kind of forgot that they was even there so they gave us a little nugget but this movie was still pretty isolated 
and the things that they covered, which it should be. Now, as far as the final battle goes for this movie versus Neymar and Shuri, it wasn't good. Like, I think the initial plan to weaken Neymar, I like that a lot. But Shuri and the mantle of Black Panther still feels very separate. So when she is fighting as Black Panther, I'm hearing the voice, but I'm not seeing the character. Even with the addition of like her sonic cannons to her suit, it still didn't feel like natural. And just, uh, and honestly, just the amount of Black Panther we got in this movie just wasn't a lot because obviously you know they had to remake the herb which didn't happen until like way later in the movie so so at the end of the day it just left me wanting more but i'm also still left with not knowing what that would be but other than that that's pretty much like all the issues i have with this movie let's get into my final thoughts So overall, I think this movie does work, but it still hurts to watch because of the idea of what could have been, honestly. Now, like I said multiple times, I think that the, co the topics that they cover are important, but I do want to get to the point we're not focusing on what people are trying to do to us, but what are they trying to do for themselves in the wake of everything else that's going around the world. So in the next movie, if we never left Wakanda again, because this was a global movie, right? But if we never left Wakanda in the next movie and focus solely on what Wakanda looks like now with Shuri as Black Panther and M'Baku as King, I'll be super interested in that. But I do think they saved the franchise, honestly. Like I was super nervous going into this thing whether we get a time jump or not in the next movie, I'm feeling good because the Black Panther mantle does continue. And the OG cast and new cast that we got was in perfect sync. And now like the last thing that I wanted to say about the movie was that, you know, Latita Wright, AKA Shuri, she held her own, man. She held her own as the main protagonist in this film. Through all the injuries, through all the controversy, she did it. You know what I'm saying? And they did it. Like, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, for me, is not the most amazing movie I've ever seen by any means. But it's one of the better movies we done got this year from Marvel. You can tell the time and care that went into making this. So for that, I appreciate everybody involved and I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen next. So all that's left now is to give a G-File score for this movie. And for that, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Before the end credits it was probably going to be a seven but because of the end credits there's so many more possibilities and it makes the movie that much better in its execution and just the feelings that it gives you which was you know hope so overall dope man it was dope let me know in the comment section what y'all thought of black panther wakanda forever i'll be doing a podcast later on this week that will drop going way more into depth with this movie with the homie chris on the why i'm geeked show so definitely check that out if you haven't already and yeah i'm gonna holler at y'all in the next video Man, y'all be easy, y'all the vibes. Always keep your eyes to go. It's me, your boy G. And I'm gone. Peace.